Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Guy Saul's Turnbuckle, the wrestling video podcast here on YouTube. Uh, again, still currently working on what I want to do in the terms of the audio side and, and a few other things to go along with it to try to expand the audience as much as I can. Now, uh, typically this would be where I, because it's the first one I've done this week, um, this is where I'd be saying I'd be de either doing Raw or SmackDown. Now, I, in the terms of reviewing both of those shows now, I don't at least in the terms of the television side, I can't actually do either one of those because I was there live. And I'm going to probably talk about that when I'm going on to, um, when I go with live, rea I, I believe live reactions with, uh, uh, for Sunday for the pay-per-view. So I'll talk about that there. So I'm going to actually skip on reviewing both of those shows and we're going to go straight into NXT this week, which I thought was actually a really good show for uh, NXT on July 5th, 2017. They started off the show with uh, Hideo Tommy and Cassie Sono going up against uh, uh, Sandy members Killian Dane and Alexander Wolf. Uh, this was a good match. It was more around the terms of building story and the terms of it being good because it was building more against uh, story between the whole Hideo Itami and Cassius Ono bit where they kind of couldn't get themselves on the same page throughout the entire match. Like uh, at one point Itami wanted to, ta wanted to tag out but Cassius was off with like Alexander Wolf you know, on the uh, on the ring apron or something in that sense. So he wasn't able to make the tag so uh, all of a sudden Hideo was like I'll just take the entire match myself. Which ended up costing them in the end where Alexander Wolf takes the GTS but there was a blind tag to Killian Dane. Killian Dane comes in and finishes off with Tommy to finish it off. And it's definitely leading into something with both Cassius Ono and Hideo Tommy somewhere down the line here. And it'll be a very interesting one and see where they go with everything. Um, also for purposes of it, I didn't say it at the beginning. My voice is still a little bit hoarse. Uh, this is like Thursday evening uh, after being at Raw and SmackDown <laughs> because uh, because of you know typical wrestling stuff in that sense. So uh, trying to kind of get through that right now, and my voice will eventually come back to its normal areas here very soon. At least I think it will. Um, up next, though, you had an Ember Moon promo where they were kind of like saying that she was having like a media shot at the performance center so you had like three different microphones in front of her or something that's so she started talking about wanting another title shot and trying to get another title shot she ends up getting interrupted by uh, ruby riot who said that she, it's her time not ember moon's time uh and everything in that sense um it's interesting to see what they've really done with the ember moon character when she started it felt like she was going to have like a mystique about her, but they kind of stripped that all away, uh, especially after her match with Asuka and everything to go along with that. Now it seems like they're going with a more, uh, trying to make her more relatable, but they keep trying different, it's not like they're trying um, the same thing within a, within a little bit of a subtle difference. They're like drastic shifts in what they're going for. Uh, with Ember Moon and it's an interesting one to see where they're going to go with and whether or not she's going to be the one that goes into uh, TakeOver in, uh, take in Brooklyn to actually uh, fit, uh, you know, go up against Asuka or who they're going to have go up against Asuka for that TakeOver show. Up next, you had a Drew McIntyre prom, uh, promo package. Uh, it was a video package going through everything that Drew McIntyre had done, and then a promo from Drew McIntyre afterwards. And I, I like this promo. It was like him talking about, you know, all lo all roads for him lead to the NXT title. And it's like next time you're talking, and he says like next time you're talking about uh, something like this, it's not going to be about somebody else's title match. It's going to be about mine. Uh, to go along with it. So that came off uh, really good. I, I liked this promo from uh, from Drew McIntyre. Uh, again, if uh, if anything that I've seen like from his Drew Galloway stuff that I've seen in Impact Wrestling, I haven't seen other his other independent work and everything to go along with it. But like promo wise, in ring wise, all that good stuff uh, that I've seen there uh, is kind of translating over into his NXT time, and he's you know. He's shown great improvement while I watched him over in Impact and all that and all that good stuff. 
Uh, after this, they air, and by the way, there was only two matches tonight. There was the tag match at the beginning, and then the uh, NXT title match, which was pretty much, ha the NXT title match was pretty much half the show. Um, <clears throat> up next, there was qu uh, a quick video package, basically promoting the fact that Johnny Gargano was going to come back next week and say uh, whatever he needed to do, or, you know, kind of address the whole thing with him and Tommaso Ciampa. For the first time since that takeover in Chicago. Now that I know that's been a couple months ago, but they're they're playing off the injury angles and everything in that sense. And Tommaso's actually out injured right now, and he may not be back until next year. They're gonna have to really drag out this one uh, in some way, shape, or form to keep it going. Or maybe they just completely uh, I won't say overlook it, but like gloss over it for the time being because like uh yeah he needs to address it but he technically can't have a match or interaction with Tommaso for quite some time due to Tommaso's knee injury and uh, yeah we'll, we'll see how that one ends out playing off as well you had a back you had another performance center th bit right before uh the Bobby Roode Roderick Strong match which was with Peyton Royce and Billy Kay they were they were just rambling on about something about Billy, Billy Kay's birthday and something in that sense. It was what was going on in the background that ended up being the kind of story. Uh, again, you had Andreas and Almas coming in. Uh, coming in, he was coming in with the uh, woman that um, had confronted him outside at the car a few weeks ago, which was Thea Trinidad, and uh, they're arguing and they're arguing and everything in that sense. And she kind of just back, uh, you know, storms off again. And the interviewer tried to get some uh, words with him, and Andre was not having any of it uh, as they go along with it. <clears throat> so, again, um, interesting, uh, a little bit of interesting stuff in building up and seeing where they're going to actually go with this whole uh, thing with Andre C. and Almas and Thea Trinidad. Is it going to be one of those things that she's kind of his handler or the person who kind of brings him back to this whole being a little bit more serious and everything in that sense when he's in the ring uh, instead of just, you know, I had a match, I'm going to go party now type guy. Uh, so we'll see how that one ends up playing off. Um, so this does lead to, <clears throat> this does lead to the Roderick Strong Bobby Roode match. Uh, both of them had, you know, quick interviews before going out there, uh, where they just get asked, like, what are your thoughts before going into the match, everything in that sense. Like, Roderick Strong was just, like, like a confident victory, uh, while Bobby Roode was, you know, he cut a little bit of a longer promo before going out there. And they went out there, and they told themselves a good story in this match. And, again, they're playing this thing off where Bobby Roode is an opportunist but he's not like a cowardly opportunist he just recognizes a mistake and then goes after it and goes after it and goes after it and goes after it. which in this case much like with the Shinsuke Nakamura match the first one ends up being Roger Strong's knee uh and they just played that off through this match they also you know you booked Roger Strong really good in this match as well uh coming really close at multiple occasions to winning the title uh and coming back from both knee work and everything in that sense throughout the match. Uh, hits his finisher. That, uh, like, flip up. Uh, it's like a flip up. It looks like you're going to go for a suplex, but he flips him and does the backbreaker. Uh, but Bobby Roode gets his foot on the rope before the three count, but the ref still counts three. So they even play it off like, oh, Roger Strong's music hits, everything in that sense. So he thinks he's won the title. And then the ref's like, ah, tell him, like, no, no, I, the foot, uh, my my hand got down there and I ended up seeing the foot underneath the rope and I can't I can't call the match for that uh, that way. And then Bobby Roode takes advantage, hitting the glorious DDT on the outside, which Roderick Strong had already kicked out of one earlier in the match where he kicked out of the glorious DDT before. Him. So he hits it on the outside of the ring and then gets back in the ring and hits it one more time and finishes off the match. Um, just overall, really good match in every in every sense of the word like th this was almost to those levels of a NXT takeover style match between the two of them and we've kind of had that the last two weeks with Asuka and Nikki Cross and now Roderick Strong and Bobby Roode uh, in their matches you got some you got some really good stuff in these matches to the point it's like you know we know we have a long time before takeover so let's give you something of that quality right now uh, to kind of whet your appetite going into it 
and see where the, uh, see where they go with everything. Um, <clears throat> now it'll be interesting to see if they play this off as maybe Roderick Strong gets another shot or something in that sense because of how uh, the ending of the match ended up being with the referee and the, to go along with it. We'll see how they storyline that to go along with everything. But, I, like I said, I like the tease of Roderick Strong winning the title, but the ref has to call it off, and then, you know, Bobby Roode takes advantage of it. Uh, again, again, it's one of those things, like, Bobby Roode plays a guy who's very opportunistic, but he doesn't play that cowardly heel opportunistic, where it's like something just happened to go in his favor, and he took advantage of it. It's not one of those things like, oh, someone purposefully gave him the advantage. It's just like, oh, I can take advantage of this. Go. Uh, type uh, type of thing where it actually kind of keeps him strong, but it doesn't and it doesn't really make him look like that cowardly heel. But he also comes off as being opportunistic at the same time. They do a good job, uh, like he does a good job of portraying that in these matches so far, at least from everything I had seen. So overall, like I said, I actually enjoyed uh, this week's NXT. I thought it came off really good. Uh, in every way, even though there was only the two matches, you had some good story build. You had a great story told in the Bo in the Bobby Roode Roderick Strong match, uh, and they're going different directions uh, in some other areas. You had some decent promos to go along with everything as well this week. So, with that being said, everyone, uh, that's pretty much everything I have for NXT this week. I will be filming a uh, Impact Wrestling as soon as I can, but I'm going to kind of skip out on Raw and SmackDown because I might be able to talk about going to the live event and everything in that sense for both shows when I do like live reactions, if I do live reactions to the Great Balls of Fire pay-per-view. Uh, so yeah, the next one you'll probably end up seeing is going to more likely be the predictions for Great Balls of Fire, and then we're going to have... Uh, impact Wrestling coming down the pipeline as well. So I hope you guys enjoy everything. I hope you enjoyed this show and have a great rest of your day.